Um, hello, everyone. Um, as Heidi said, uh, my name is Bijan, and uh, I'm the program manager here at Summer School. Uh, hopefully, everyone can hear me, uh, and I'm really, really happy to be here with you all. Thank you so much for taking time today to to join us, and uh, <clears throat> and we'll spend the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes talking about uh, the world of uh, <clears throat> gig economy and uh, and uh, some of the trainings that we've put together uh, for folks in this uh, in this universe. So uh, what I would like to do is, um, uh, I think you guys have all been put on mute, but just in case you haven't, if you could put yourself on mute. And then at the end, uh, we're gonna open it up uh, for folks uh, who may have questions uh, and you can also type your questions in the, in the chat box. Uh, so with that, let me jump in. Um, and uh, get going. Uh, great. So, um, quick agenda for uh, for everyone. Uh, we'll do a, uh, a quick overview of the gig economy, some of the trends, uh, some some information about platforms, um, and uh, and go and then go into uh, what the summer school uh, training and some of the outcomes that we've had, and then uh, overview of our partnership with the Cameo Network uh, so far, and uh, we'll wrap it up at the end with some questions uh, from folks. And so that'll be, uh, that'll be the agenda. So a little bit about uh, Summer School. Uh, so Summer School is a, a nonprofit organization headquartered here in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we develop and uh, deliver educational materials to provide a variety of individuals the knowledge and skills that they need to succeed as freelancers. Uh, we, over the past few years, we've provided uh, direct training to uh, more than 2,500 uh, folks uh, in, the Bay, in the San Francisco Bay Area and also in New York uh, area. And we've also developed a national presence through you know, a variety of channels, including uh, you know, leading virtual classrooms. Uh, uh, and uh, what you see on the screen uh, there is, is our mission. So our mission is to equip people to earn and learn through independent work as a pathway to increase income, uh, build a business or grow a career. So that's our mission. Uh, a little bit about our approach. Uh, so we develop and deliver training uh, to prepare individuals uh, to uh, uh, become successful participants in the gig economy. And when we talk about independent workers or independent workforce, we're really referring to people who are classified as independent contractors. And there's different terms for it. We'll go over that on, on the next few slides. Um, so this basically includes you know, temporary uh, workers, on-call workers, contract, freelancers, gig workers. Um, and, uh, and as far as our research and development, uh, we, uh, and also for our curriculum development, we take a bottom-up approach. Uh, we work with partners to maximize the benefits for the populations that they serve. And uh, plus, you know, considering the landscape in this world is constantly changing, we adapt our curriculum uh, for different audiences, for example, uh, folks who may be in the IT field or populations that are of, uh, you know, older uh, age populations and so forth. Uh, so we adapt. Uh, as far as, you know, data analysis, we do quite a bit of data collection and analysis uh, from our uh, program alumni, uh, things like uh, independent work activation, type of income generating activities, uh, income levels uh, uh, and and various needs and satisfaction. Um, so that's all uh, part of our part of our approach. Um, so for, as far as our partnerships, uh, really our our preferred approach is uh, to partner with um, local organizations uh, that are already providing some sort of workforce readiness or social service. Um, and we do this, um, uh, we found that, uh, that our training is mo most impactful when it's paired with a uh, variety of other supports and services. 
uh, like case management, vocational training, and these are things that we don't provide. Uh, but you know, with our partnerships, it it, uh, it provides a nice nice package. Um, and we're really proud that our partnerships over the last few years have grown from just a few to uh, to over 20, uh, and which you can see some of them here on this slide. And um, you know, due to a really tremendous feedback and uh, requests that uh, we have we have gotten, uh, we are actually shifting uh, our delivery methods in order to have a wider reach and ensure that we can continue to meet the demands and deliver you know, high quality training uh, to folks. And we've also learned, uh, which you, I'm sure you already probably know, is that organizations are really, you know, they're juggling a lot of projects and tasks. And as far as their uh, members are concerned, it may be difficult for a lot of them to come for in-person workshops, uh, especially in more remote rural er areas. Uh, so, uh, which is really a good, uh, you know, reason to provide this type of training, you know, virtually. And we'll go in, into more detail about uh, what our training curriculum looks like uh, on the following slides. Okay. Um, so, I'd like to give you a quick overview of, uh, of the world of independent work. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's different terms that folks use for independent work. For the purposes of this, uh, um, this, this uh, presentation, we'll use phrases uh, like freelancing, gig work, gig economy uh, to capture this kind of work arrangement. But as you can see, there's different you know, terms that are used, uh, gig work, uh, side hustle, side job, consulting, contracting, on-demand work, they, they all basically mean the same thing. Um, so uh, kind of the various buzzwords that are used. Okay, um, so independent work uh, really offers a, a number uh, as well as a lot of benefits, which we're gonna go into later. Uh, on this slide, uh, we wanted to capture, you know, some of the potential drawbacks and limitations that folks should be aware of. And uh, I'll just go through uh, some of these um, lack of various supports and protections that uh, the first three items on the, on the list, uh, you know, specify. Uh, while you know independent workers you know tend to earn a higher uh, and there's there's also hidden costs so uh, while these workers tend to earn a higher hourly wage than regular employees they also tend to have higher costs associated with working uh, um, uh, than than conventional employees and these additional costs uh, are, are things like you know for example taxes uh, the independent workers, you know, must pay a self-employment tax of over 15% uh, for Social Security and Medicare, whereas, you know, employees um, that work for, you know, various companies, they, half of this is, is covered by their employers. And of course, there's also benefits that independent workers must pay for their own, you know, health insurance and, and so forth and don't receive, you know, paid time off, sick leave and so forth. Um, and uh, for folks who use uh, um, freelancing platforms um, online, there's platform fees. Um, and, uh, and these websites and apps are run for, by for-profit companies and almost all of them charge you know, fees some, anywhere between the range of 10 to 40% of earnings, which is pretty significant. Um, and then there's, you know, unreimbursed uh, expenses uh, that independent workers must provide their own material and equipment and so forth. So these are all, you know, things that, you know, folks need to be aware of. And another important item is also, uh, there's also work and income uh, variability. Um, people relying on independent work as their primary source of income uh, can experience a pretty high degree of, you know, week to week variability in the number of hours they work and the income that they earn. And this is largely uh, because um, independent workers tend to operate on a, on a project basis. 
and it's pretty difficult to predict you know when they get new clients um, you know and what the project budget might be um, so um, so that's another thing that, that uh, folks need to be aware of for example you know in 2015 there was a study of uh, over 200,000 independent workers and it showed that there was a 10 times differential between their largest and smallest paychecks. So it's, there's a lot, of, a lot of variability there. So, uh, however, um, you know, having said all that on the previous slide, uh, the workforce is changing. You know, more and more companies are hiring contractors and gig workers, freelancers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and in many cases on a project by project basis. So this is, this is what's, what's happening uh, um, in, in, the, in the workforce uh, world. And, uh, and here are some numbers on this slide that show this shift. And uh, uh, some of these numbers are you know, a couple of years old, but you can see the continuing growth. Uh, for example, you know, since 2014, you know, freelancing work has grown three times uh, the overall U.S. workforce. Um, and also in 2017, 36% uh, of working Americans earned at least some income from, from freelancing. And, and these were uh, from a couple of different studies uh, that were done uh, by Upwork, Freelancers Union, and uh, McKinsey. Um, so just a quick thing I wanted to highlight on this slide without going through all the, the, the details of it is basically the, the main message here is that although there are really different methods that people use to find gig work or independent work, it's interesting note, uh, to, to note on this chart that most folks rely heavily on their friends, family, and professional networks to find independent work. Um, uh, so I, which may be a little bit different from uh, the, the public perception of how this is done, but most people still kind of rely on the old methods of, of just friends, family, and professional networks. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, <clears throat> So the gig economy, um, as we talked about, uh, you know, is it's really becoming so big that you can get almost any kind of work through it. Uh, as you can see on the slides, I mean, these can be uh, IT type jobs, they can be babysitting jobs, house cleaning, tutoring, delivery, um, you know, other types can be things like, you know, running errands, being a stylist, you know, moving services, handyman, photography, and so forth. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty wide range of uh, opportunities that are, that are available out there. And uh, for folks that use online gig work platforms, uh, here are some of the most popular ones that are out there, uh, as you can see on this slide. And, uh, and some of them specialize in specific areas, like for example, like IT, uh, Field Nation uh, that you see in the middle of the chart there uh, is, uh, is one of those, that they, their specialty is, is in, the, in the technical and IT fields. Other, other sites like you know, TaskRabbit and Thumbtack are uh, more uh, general. Okay, um, so now let's talk about some of the uh, benefits of freelancing. Earlier on, we covered you know, some of the uh, uh, things that, uh, you know, downsides of, of freelancing and p things that people should be aware of before getting into it. But here are some of the things that are really, you know, are considered benefits of freelancing. So on uh, accessibility and income generation, um, there, there, there was a research from Intuit that a few years ago, a couple of years ago, that showed um, independent workers average about thirty-four dollars uh, per hour, while the average wage in the U.S. is twenty-two dollars per, per hour. 
independent work has a uh, you know low barrier to entry as you know workers can can access jobs quickly through online plat platforms or word of mouth materials uh, the accessibility um, of independent work also offers a number of advantages for people who are looking to you know re-enter the work workforce um, you know such as you know, uh, people who may be long-term unemployed uh, young people who are just you know starting their careers um, and people looking to you know quickly generate some supplemental income so at summer school we found that you know highly motivated students are uh, able to secure paying independent work in a matter of uh, in some cases in a matter of days or weeks as opposed to uh, a few months that sometimes it can take to find a full-time job and there's also flexibility and autonomy um, you know being a freelancer the ability to start and stop working as as you know desired uh, makes independent work a pretty viable option for people with other obligations and commitments uh, such as part-time workers students you know caregivers and uh, at summer school our students are often enrolled in training programs and those who complete independent work often point to um, the ability to work around their existing schedules as a as a major benefit and uh, regarding you know skills and experience and uh, skills development and just overall confidence um, you know due to its accessibility independent work can serve as a way for people to practice skills and develop real world um, paid work experience this is an opportunity for um, it's a really good opportunity for young adults entering the workforce, for example, for the first time. Um, you know, career changers, uh, uh, people who are in process of changing careers, uh, who lack experience in the new industries that this type of work could give them that, that experience that gives them a nice, you know, uh, way to transition into new industries. And also others who have been, you know, disconnected from work for uh, you know time for family or health reasons or or, or other reasons um, full-time freelancers also benefit using a wide range of uh, skills and you know adding a uh, diverse experiences to their portfolios um, and in a short time uh, somebody who is looking at a job seeker can uh, can build a resume with work that reflects some of these new skills and knowledge and competencies that they've, they've gained uh, in through through independent work, and they can also prove you know the quality of their work with the help of you know client ratings and reviews. Uh, so it's more than just you know words on a resume; uh, they actually have something you know real you know world experience to to prove it. Um, and uh, these are uh, uh, here's some success stories from uh, some of our alumni uh, that you see on this slide but uh, i would like to uh, specifically focus on two of them uh, lavelle and christy uh, who have gone on to uh, you know freelancing careers or are now uh, successful entrepreneurs and i know this is an area that uh, you know, um, your organizations are very focused on. So I wanted to, you know, point these two out. L uh, Lavelle uh, used independent work to support himself while um, he was, you know, launching his new business. Uh, we at Summer School, we met Lavelle while he was uh, starting his business um, at, at the East Palo Alto, uh, at, a, at a East Palo Alto, uh, California incubator uh, called uh, Street Code. Um, he's a pretty charismatic uh, entrepreneur. He had pr uh, predominantly worked a number of part-time jobs in the past, but needed income and flexibility to launch his business. After taking the summer school training, uh, he secured um, uh, independent work through TaskRabbit, where he's now uh, classified as an elite tasker. Uh, and, uh, you know, earning over $45 an hour on his own schedule as an assistant, um, you know, uh, a mover and marketer. And he uses these funds to support his new business while at the same time, 
building a TaskRabbit client base uh, with a 98% positive review rating uh, on TaskRabbit, which is, which is very good. Um, Christy um, was uh, kind of at a crossroads when she took the summer school workshop back in 2016. Uh, less than a year later, she started working full time doing gig work um, after taking after taking the training, u uh, utilizing the tools that she learned uh, in our in our training. Uh, Christy now uh, does uh, two to three gigs per day, um, five to six days a week, and she's uh, making just as much income as she was previously making with, you know, with uh, a larger number of gigs, five to six gigs per day when she started. Uh, and she finds her clients and projects through Craigslist, Nextdoor, you know, word of mouth uh, through her network. Um, and, uh, and her work, uh, her, her gig work initially started with cleaning uh, um, and working at various Airbnb locations. And uh, now she has so many clients that she now hires people to do that work for her. Um, she also works uh, uh, in the caregiving field, uh, cleaning and uh, pet sitting. Uh, so she is uh, basically considers herself as a full-time uh, gig worker. Okay, um, so now let's uh, dive a little bit into our training curriculum and uh, some of the results that I'd like to uh, share with you. Uh, our curriculum uh, really covers four main components uh, that you can see on this slide. Uh, an introduction to freelancing, um, how to prepare for freelancing, um, being successful as a freelancer and, you know, just kind of overall managing your life as a, as a freelancer. And each component, you know, obviously covers specific areas that you can see here uh, on the slide. Uh, so this is kind of an uh, overview of what the curriculum actually covers. Um, and uh, this slide uh, uh, is kind of an overview of a survey that we did uh, from our alumni community. Um, and uh, the, the uh, thing I wanted to point out here is the average time that they uh, uh, engage with this work was uh, five months. <clears throat> so we estimate that their average annual freelance earning to be as, as high as uh, $22,000. And then they, with the uh, research showing that nearly half of Americans uh, can't afford a $400 emergency, this finding, you know, suggests that uh, independent work might serve as a promising uh, option for folks to quickly earn um, some supplemental income for, you know, unanticipated expenses and emergencies. Uh, we all experience. Let me skip over this one. Okay. Um, so a little bit about the uh, summer school and uh, our uh, partnership with uh, with Cameo uh, so far. Uh, we actually. Um, have worked with a number of Cameo partners, the ones that you see on this slide uh, 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 over, the, over the past year. Uh, and these have been uh, mainly you know, in-person, uh, organizing in-person uh, classes with some of these. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, kind of give a shout out to, uh, to these partners that we've worked with in the past. And we're really looking forward to, uh, to expanding our, our work with, uh, with Cameo partners, you know, with the, with the new virtual uh, offering that we're, we're talking about today. And what you see here is, is just some uh, feedback that we got from, uh, from these Cameo partners uh, over the past year uh, as far as what their uh, 
experience was. So a uh, net promoter score is a way for us to, uh, to, to measure how satisfied uh, folks are, uh, whether they're, they're trainees or partners of, uh, about the training and whether they would actually recommend um, the training to, to other organizations or to other uh, participants. So 78% uh, of, of uh, the Cameo partners that we worked with, uh, they, they, they said that they would recommend it. And, um, and they, the students that participated in these uh, trainings, 92% of them are, you know, were very likely uh, to use the knowledge that they gained from the summer school training to find, to find independent. Okay, so uh, the uh, the delivery methods that uh, we use uh, that we're uh, moving into, I wanted to cover uh, a little bit of that. So uh, <clears throat> there are um, four different components here, uh, webinars, coaching, on-demand content, and community. Uh, on webinars, um, there uh, will be one one hour work webinar each month, which will be led by a summer school instructor. Uh, the, co the content uh, um, you know, will, will vary from month to month and will uh, uh, feature relevant guest speaker and subject matter experts. For example, you know, uh, uh, some of the areas that will be covered uh, could be uh, around taxes, you know, around you know, working from home, um, you know, could be an interview with a freelancer who works from home, uh, focus on networking, uh, proposal writing. So those are some of the things that you know would, would be covered uh, um, on these webinars. Um, and then uh, for coaching, uh, we'll be uh, able to uh, provide uh, coaching to up to 15 participants each month uh, that can elect to receive um, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching and personalized support. Um, and this would, would include, you know, onboarding call with a coach to kind of uh, get an understanding of the user's goals and their previous experience and work interest and, and, and work with them to create a, a you know, custom uh, career plan. And then there will be a monthly, a one monthly check-in call uh, for up to two months that will be also included. Uh, as well as uh, bi-weekly text messages and email correspondences uh, for up to uh, two months. Um, and when uh, folks uh, register, they will also uh, be able to access our on-demand courses, um, which are mostly video uh, content that enable users to uh, 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 you know, access this, this content. And uh, these will be, uh, as I said, mostly video based with each video being, you know, anywhere between five to 60 minutes. Um, and uh, they could also be, you know, screen, screen capture tutorials, for example, you know, how to search for and assess jobs on, on various platforms. Um, and uh, it could also be interviews with subject matter experts and just uh, explanations of, of various topics by, by, different, uh, by different folks. So that's all part of the on-demand content that <clears throat> they will have uh, access to. Oh, and there's, uh, and there's also uh, a community, uh, there's a Facebook group that we have uh, that they will also have access to um, and discussion forum. B Bijan, I have a yes. question on the content, on the on-demand content. Is that like the typical class that t shows you, takes you through the different way, you know, like it's, is it kind of a directed path that shows you how to, um, you know, that takes you through what your former class was or? Uh, then, uh, so, uh, like where does someone start? Like where, where does? Yeah, we're actually going to cover that on the next slide. Okay. Yeah, uh, so let me jump to that uh, right now. So basically, uh, this is kind of what a participant's journey would look like. Um, uh, so when they when they first, uh, you know, they, they first obviously they 
they find the summer school through you know one of the cameo partners and uh, what we'll do is we'll provide uh, each of your organizations with a registration uh, page uh, that you can share with your um, with your members that they can go and uh, and sign up and they once they sign up they receive a welcome email uh, with a link to uh, to a uh, um, so they can they can schedule their their onboarding call and they also gain immediate access to uh, the on-demand courses and videos that that uh, I mentioned earlier, and then um, there will also be a uh, uh, the onboarding one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, with a coach. Um, so, uh, and then of course the monthly webinars will be happening starting in uh, in February, and once we uh, um, get all the uh, folks who want to participate in this. We will be sending out the schedules of, of the exact days of uh, when these webinars will be, um, and then um, uh, and then the weekly check-ins. Um, we'll receive on you know uh, each user will receive ongoing weekly check-ins from their coach via text messages and, and email. Um, and then, of course, the, the check-in calls. So that's kind of what, you know, the participant's journey will look like to, for, for this program. Great, and there's a question in chat is, do you have workshops, webinars in Spanish? Um, we actually, uh, uh, yes, we do. We have uh, translated uh, most of our content. We're actually in process of finalizing it now uh, into, into Spanish. Uh, so yes. So the answer is yes. Yep. Does anybody have any other questions on uh, how the, it would work? Daniel, so it basically, um, we would do, there would be some outreach done on the part of Cameo members, Cameo and Cameo members, if you're interested in um, perhaps um, getting into this, then can you go back to the other slide? Sure. Sorry. And then the user would sign up and they'd get some kind of, um, they'd get come sign a code that was assigned to your organization and um, basically then go right through the process. So when you, when you would advertise it, say, hey, I'm with Cameo, let's say Meta, right? And they would sign up with that code. And that's how that we would know that it would come from you. Um, and then the user will, the user will go in and talk to Samus School and then um, do the program. And then there would be um, some reporting on the back end that um, would tell who, you know, how many people went through the webinar, you know, what they did. Um, where they, what they thought of. I don't know exactly what questions or what data you guys gather, um, Dijon, but that would be kind of the gist of the um, things that you'd get um, feedback. And Cameo is working with Sam's School on providing this, this opportunity for you also. Um, you can have access to the platform, but not, not too much um, on your part. Um, and then get some information on the back end on um, how they did through the class. And then you could take that and turn that into future, future consulting or future work or future clients, depending on what you're doing. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, and, uh, um, and uh, and that's a great segue for uh, the, the registration process. So for everyone, all of uh, the Cameo uh, partner organizations that are interested uh, for your community members to participate in this, all you have to do is go to uh, this link on the slide, uh, which obviously we'll be sharing with everybody after the webinar yeah. today. And there's a short form that you would fill out and uh, we will, uh, once you do that, we will uh, send you 
um, a page. This will be a registration page that you can actually share out with all of your members. So again, just to clarify, this link on this slide is not for uh, the actual uh, participants uh, for, for our training. It's only for you, the, the Cameo partners, to express interest for getting your organization signed up. So that's the first step. And once you do that, we'll, we'll follow up with uh, in a, a link to a registration page that you can share out to your communities. And we'll also get like the, uh, anybody is interested, we'll contact and we'll have a conversation with you and see if you have any extra questions or how it will work or what have you, what you need for, from you. So um, yeah, can you pop that into chat right now? Um, yes. Bijan? Absolutely. In case people want to, you know, learn, kind of learn more. Are you thinking is this something that you're thinking you would, your organization would think about doing? And um, yeah, and we'll um, have a conversation with you. Well, Oops. Yep. And there's our emails in case. He'll give you our emails in case while I'm introducing. Um, Sorry. Here's our emails. Uh, I will. Um, I'll type the emails into chat. Thank you. 